Hi everyone, it's Vacha here from Recording Studio 9 and thanks for joining me again. If you recall, in my last uh, couple of videos, uh, I unboxed and looked at the Behringer's Firepower FCA1616 audio interface, which is this one here. If you haven't watched my unboxing and looking all of the knobs and the buttons and the switches and the plugs and the sockets, then uh, you can go back and, uh, uh, and look at them because that I go through pretty much most of its functionalities. So, in this video, I will go through the process of actually getting it connected to our computer. So, um, I will connect it to my laptop using the USB uh, connection. And then, um, most likely, we would need the, uh, the drivers for the Windows. Um, I'm running Windows 8.1. So we'll download those drivers and install them and give it a try. Now, funny enough, the quick manual that comes in the box, um, I pretty much read all the way through in the English section and it does not mention anything much of drivers other than saying install the driver. No information of how to get it, where to get it, where to find it and so on. And at the same time, this is a quick guide. It says, check out Behringer.com for full manual. I went to the whole Behringer website and searched online for a full manual. It doesn't exist. So a lot of information that I wanted to get for some of the options like the pads switch to find out exactly how many dB it's actually um, reducing when you press that button down. Uh, there's no information in here or anywhere else. So I had to work it out, plug it in and work it out that it actually is uh, minus 15 dB, not minus 20 dB I, as I assumed in my last video. So um, yeah, it falls a little bit short on additional information. Now, the only place you can actually find where to download the driver is in the specification section and it's a tiny little writing and says about the operating systems and basically it says um, just go to Behringer.com and download it. So we'll do that. <laughs> just what I'll let you know. Now remember this device can have two connections. Um, one is the Firewire connection and the other one is a USB connection. So depending on what connection you want to use, most likely the popular one would be the USB connection, then you download the appropriate drivers. I would actually recommend to download all the drivers and have them on your computer. So in case you ever change your mind, then you'll have the drivers. You don't have to go and fetch them again. Um, so um, my laptop has only USB connection so that's what I'm going to connect. Later on I might use the my Mac to connect the device to using the Firewire connection. Now the good thing with Mac and the Behringer's FCA1616 is no drivers required, just plug and go. So um, let's go ahead, I'll show you where to get the, um, the, the drivers and how to install them. Now, to download the drivers, all we need to do is open our browsers and visit Behringer.com. So just type that in there and you can visit there. And now, to uh, get the drivers, we need to find a product first. So you can either go to products and um, go to all of their products and try to find it. But easiest way I found is to go to the search and search for FCA1616. And there we go, Firepower FCA 1616. You click on that, and here we go. It opens up. So, so you can read a bit more about it, uh, what it does. Um, I probably explain better in my videos um, about it. But anyway, so uh, let's go to the downloads section, past the pictures, and documentation. As I mentioned, Online, all you can get is the quick start guide that um, we already have. So um, 
there's no full manual as the quick start guide says and um, and so on so it comes in multiple languages the next are uh, you will see that there's some icons for apps now if you don't have a recording software Behringer will provide you uh, all of this software it's not their own software they're free open source software like Audacity and so on so you can go ahead and download them if you like but if you already have a recording software so you can skip all of those the next one are the drivers the drivers would be for Firewire and the USB obviously you want to get the latest one which is a June 12 2013 um, so get both Firewire as well as the um, USB driver that way you always have them on hand and the next thing is you probably don't have to worry about it if you just recently purchased um, the uh, the unit like myself is the firmware unless you have an old one that you bought it from uh, eBay um, and so on you might want to have a check to make sure that you've got the latest firmware firmware is the software inside the box that makes it all thing work um, so they might have fixed a few things so you can go ahead and uh, download it if you need to but as I said if you just recently purchased it like myself you don't have to worry about it you don't need to download it I mean you can so uh, that's it so that's are the drivers that um, we click and download once it's downloaded let's go ahead and install them so I just opened up my um, file explorer and gone to the downloads because that's where 8.1 downloads to and as you can see I've got my two drivers the USB and the Firewire driver so I'm just gonna right click on that and say extract all this is something everybody should be able to do and extract and uh, obviously if you were running the Firewire connection then you would do the same thing for the Firewire now that I've got the Firewire uh, USB version open so I double click to that one and find the setup and then just um, simply double click yes and we follow the prompts to install so um, it won't take much long um, you'll quickly install all the drivers please disconnect and uh, reconnect the device if you wish to turn it on so um, I'll go ahead and uh, turn the unit on and connect the uh, USB cable to it so I can just plug in there so that's the unit there so we have our power so we just simply connect that at the back of the unit and we watch the um, LEDs flash up as you can see the blue light is flashing that means it's waiting for a USB connection and I'll show you later on how to change that to a firewire connection when we connect it to my uh, Mac by using this button before actually plugging the power in instructions are in the manual anyway so the next thing we need to do is plug the USB connection at the back bit hard to do with um, one hand as I've got the camera on my other hand now that we have our USB connected let's go ahead and uh, click the OK button hopefully it will be talking to the box and it actually has um, so the blue light is steady at the moment so it's all all good click next to continue finish and we are done installing the drivers so it wasn't hard to do so let's click all of those and now we should be able to see the unit whenever we turn on uh, any of uh, my um, uh, recording software so let's try first the easy one audacity not the one that I like okay now we should be able to select here we go if you can see how we have the FCA um, 
uh, connections there. So we have uh, mic one and two, mic three and four, line five and six, line seven and eight. And we also have the SPDIF uh, stereo input there as well. And then, so let's select uh, mic one and two. And then for output, we can definitely select the output one and two, uh, three and four, five and six, and seven and eight, and SPDIF as well. So it's all right there. Fantastic. So we are ready to start recording. One of the other things that we can have a look at is the Behringer's FCA 1616 USB control panel. Once we run the small icon on the taskbar, so we can actually see the device right there. And then we can check out all of its inputs, what its names are, and then all of its outputs. And the synchronization, what the sampling rate we want it to be. So uh, 44.1 is the standard default that it gets selected, but uh, I would highly recommend to select either 48 or 96 kilohertz. That way you get a uh, better sampling rate, um, but it also depends on the software uh, though you are using, what it is capable of. But I guess uh, most, um, those these days can handle 96 kilohertz and the clock source this is for the SPDIF um, whether you want it from the SPDIF input or device internal clock that is only if you are using the SPDIF um, uh, connections and the settings obviously you can select the buffer it's um, 2 milliseconds by default um, for in synchronous streaming and the Azure buffer are 10 milliseconds for in and out. So uh, not bad, not bad. And uh, later on, once we give it a try um, to see what the latencies are coming through, you'll be quite amazed. It's hardly any uh, latency when uh, the audio is being processed um, uh, through the any of your dough and they're coming back out again as well so we'll test them out later on well I hope I was able to help you and guide you how to get uh, the drivers where to find them and how to install them and get it working and get some uh, recording software up and going and connected to the uh, FCA 1616 so um, if you have any comments about this part of the procedure Please feel free to comment below and I'm more than happy to uh, answer them for you. Or if something that you'd like to find out, then uh, I can organize that as well. And um, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe because our next video, we're going to go ahead and connect the uh, unit into my Mac using the Firewire connection and see how it performs there as well. And um, until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio.